Because if you really want to do the work that Maya Moore did, can you balance being a professional athlete and training and playing and, and doing the things you need to do to play at the level of guys like Dwight Howard, who's going to be Hall of Famer one day, and Kyrie Irving, who's one of the best guards in the league? Can you really balance both of those things? It goes back to the cap thing, man. It's what are you really like? What are you What are you built for? What is your purpose? What are you called for? Is it bigger than you? Can you handle bigger than you? If a plate is bigger than your face, can you eat the whole plate, right? Whoa. Can you, that was wild? That was wild. Was that wild? It's a little wild. Eat the whole plate? Eat the whole plate is wild. Eat talking, the whole plate sounds crazy. What is on a plate? Nothing sexual is on a plate. Ass? <laughs> yeah, you said it. Can you handle bigger? You want to stop hooping? Sure. Can you do what Maya Moore did and say, I'm going to take a whole season off and just focus on one person's life to make an imp impact on it? And I'm going to do what it takes. I'm going to go through the hoops and every day I'm going to live, eat, sleep, and breathe this until I see a result. Are you called for that action? That's a question you have to ask yourself. Absolutely. And most people aren't, which is fine. Which is fine. But shift that energy and put it in what you're good at. And where you can have an impact and where you can make a difference. Maya Moore took that energy and put it into something way bigger than her. Bro, she's not even related to dude. Mm -hmm. She has no no association to dude in any capacity. This is bigger than her. This is what, what she like this is this is a this is a call. This is like I love to see this. This is like, yo, bigger than me, bigger than basketball. Yeah, it's purpose. This something is she it. was something she was called to do. And she is not like no some like, oh, Maya Moore, like Average player, like she's been dogging. She's a Jordan athlete. Like Maya Moore, it. You yeah, know what I'm saying she is women's basketball. She's the future of women's basketball. She's, she's an all-time nice. great. All-time great. And bigger than her, though. Bigger than it her. is. And you got to be when it comes to this fight, also, right? It's it's not a it's not a week long thing. It's not a month long thing. It's not a year long thing. It is a so you see it through. A, a commitment to seeing it through. And then yeah. after you see it through, it's on to the next one. Because think of all the work that Maya Moore did. There. Exactly. All the work that Maya Moore did. And that's one person. That's one win. And that's, you know as a competitor, that's, one win feels good, so you want another one. That's, and so that's how change goes. But that's one, that's one person out of thousands who were convicted at the age of 15 or 16 for a ridiculous drug offense or nonviolent offense and where there's no evidence and where the police were corrupt or they, they, they didn't get the legal representation that they had and this is a fight that she is committed to to pushing through you know and sure. if Dwight and Kyrie are going to talk this shit they have to be able to back it up they can't just boohoo on the phone to Steven Jackson and you know and cry about some of the responses that they're getting from people like Stephen A. Smith or other reporters who want them to play. Now, when it, when it comes to playing, like I said, for the, the levels and the time that I think Kyrie and Dwight have put into this, I think the best thing for them to do is play. Use those microphones that are going to be in front of your face after every playoff game. And and say the things that you need to say. Speak up. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and speak up. And if you want to sit out, individually to prove a point that's cool whatever bro. if you want to do a call to action for other people to join your movement that's cool too but it just can't look like the cool thing for them to do it can't it can't be Kyrie saying we should all sit out and him playing it can't be Dwight saying hey we should all sit out and him playing because Cap didn't go to his teammates and say Hey, I need all y'all to kneel or I'm not playing. He went out there and he kneeled with the teammates that chose to join his movement and join his message and played his game, right? And did his thing. Listen, man. So it can't be that. Is, is, I got a friend. He plays in the NBA. And when he ever speaks about being about hooping, about a game, about anything, it's work. Mm -hmm. He's always been like that. It's work. It's a good it's approach. A job. It's, you know what I'm saying? It's a job. And I think ultimately when you ship this down, like they're not playing ba basketball is not their hobby. It's their job. So if you want to boycott your job, fine. Right? But like the other Americans who, who are protesting and X, Y, and Z, they're not doing that. Right? I've spoken to a good amount of people who are trying to make a difference within their community and in their company. 
And so like my approach is like, what can you do in the situation to create or help with the change? Hey, Kyrie, go to your job and, and impact there. How the M- what the NBA is doing, where they're sending their funds to, who, what programs they have in place, whatever it is. But like you could use, utilize your job. I don't think you need to say, I'm not hooping no more. Or you could, you're not even hooping, bro. Your shoulders hurt and your team's not even going to make the playoffs. So like whatever. But it's about using your platform and leveraging that to say, hey, I can make a difference here. And I think uh, I made a point to one of my friends. Like I think Kyrie, honestly, just out—he's just thinking out loud. He doesn't know what he wants to he do. He does that. He, he, he says know what the he first thing that to comes to his head. He's just out here thinking out loud. Yeah, yeah. And with Dwight, I think Dwight's statement was a little bit more well thought out, a little more better, fleshed out. Better. I get it. I understand I get it. Being but part I want of your families. But like I also, these. Like, but there's the. I mean, there's like, there's these people are not even credible because how many kids do. Okay, never mind. Yeah, you're wilding. <laughs> but, like, keep it a bean, though. You're talking about, like, how important it is to be, like, you have kids all across the country. He has over five kids with different baby moms. So, like, yeah, it's great that you're now figuring out a time to focus on your family. That's dope. But you have a job and a responsibility. Some of you had a job and responsibility to be a father. So, like, do, like, don't just be cool in the moment. I mean, another layer to this is coronavirus is still a very real thing. Also a thing. I got, te- hey, I got tested the other day. And... Pass your test. Got a sixty-five. Pass my test. Negative. Got a sixty-five. Okay. Good job. Let me tell you something about that though. I had it was a self-test. You have to do your own test. Mm-hmm. So you pull up to the CVS thing and you take the uh, the tool mm-hmm. and you shove it up your nose. And Shorty says, mm-hmm. "Shove it up your nose until you can't go any further." After you reach that point, now you twitch for fifteen seconds. Sounds freaky, but it's actually what you call the coronavirus uh, coronavirus test. So you go as far as you can, and then you twitch for fifteen seconds. <sighs> Naturally. Your eyes start to just leak. Tear up. Yeah. Oh, man. Crazy, but negative. You was crying like Kyrie? I was not crying like Kyrie. Yo, you are so hot that Kyrie was crying. He's a crier. Um, he's a crier he's like a Kyrie. Cry. He's emotional. Yeah.